I believe in God, even if God is only the name that we use for the capacity of humans to love one another. Yes. So like, it's, it's very atheist, uh, right? It's like, God's not a thing, but God ooh, is a thing. Ooh, ooh, but that's good because there were even readings in Atheism for Lent that uh, talked about God as a being, mm-hmm. an actual thing, yeah, and kind of rejected that idea, but didn't totally. Another episode of the Grounded Presence Podcast, a place for exploring authentic identity, deep community, and the process of spiritual evolution. I'm Daniel Powell, and I am back, this time with another conversation with Elizabeth Kalunga, who I talked to last episode about our experience at Theology Beer Camp. This time we are going to be talking about another interesting event that we were involved in together, and this event is called Atheism for Lent, or AFL for short. And Atheism for Lent is a course that's offered online by author and speaker Peter Rollins. And the course is just a compilation of a lot of different works of philosophy and theology intended to confront you with things that you may not have had to think through before. So it's a very fruitful experience. There's a lot to be learned and your mind gets stretched a tremendous amount through this course. This took place over the six weeks of Lent in 2018. And at the end of every week, we'd meet up with a small group of friends and acquaintances to discuss the content that we went through. And a quick note before I get started here, the audio quality isn't as good as I'd prefer it to be. It's very echoey. It sounds like it was recorded in a cave. Still a great conversation. Um, One more note is halfway through, there's some really weird audio interference that's some clicking and buzzing. It's like that, 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 that. Um, Your device isn't exploding. It's just a weird audio anomaly on the recording, so don't worry about it. So without any further ado, here's me and Elizabeth Kalunga talking about atheism for Lent. All right, so the next event. This event has a crazy name, all right? Atheism for Lent. AFL for short. Yep. So what is atheism for Lent? I don't even know what Lent is, to be honest. Um, No. Okay. So I, I don't know much about it. Yeah. I'm not sure the overarching like spiritual theme behind it, but I know that Lent, it's like a six week or like 40 day period. I know mm-hmm. it's 40 days, something about Jesus. Mm. Um, so it's a 40 day period mm. where you like redevote yourself to your faith. Okay. Maybe redevote yourself to God. Try to alter your, your personal trajectory, right? Okay. Like so realigning, realigning with God over that time. Okay. And so there's, I think there's a lot of readings and stuff associated with it, like in the Catholic Church. This is all making more sense. Okay. Go ahead. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, th- that church that me and Amy went to, they had a Lent thing. So I learned a little bit about it then, and that it wasn't just the stuff that comes out of your pockets in the wash. You know? mm. So for the whole Lenten season, it's a giving up of a thing, or usually people like give up yeah, chocolate. Yeah, right. Or... So like giving up something that would normally be a distraction. Got it. So when this church went through Lent that Amy and I were attending, mm-hmm. you know, giving up like Netflix or, you know, maybe limiting your Netflix consumption for a month was a really popular one. <laughs> yeah. Because come on. Yeah. That's, you know, and then Instagram, Facebook, all that. Those yeah. are the things that really distract from your spiritual life. So, you know, being a spiritual being. Got it. So this is supposed to be parallel to Jesus in the wilderness for four <clears> days. <throat> And him fasting. I think so. Oh, Um, well then it makes a lot more sense now because now that you're saying Lent is a way to sort of repurpose or kind of hone in on your conversation with God. You know what I found with atheism for Lent? Atheists. And I think Simone Weil, which is one of the readings from the course Atheism for Lent, Simone Weil even said that atheists, when they're saying that they're running so far away, they're actually running to God. That's more spiritual connectedness than, than 
yeah, stri stripping away things is fine. But I feel like this practice of listening to the skeptic is way more divine in finding our purpose and our source of being, that being God. Yeah, <clears throat> that's all I was going to say about that. So this was my first time doing Atheism for Lent. Mm -hmm. You've done it before? I've done it alone last year, oh, okay. 2017. Full disclosure, I didn't read a lot of the stuff because I found a few things, like maybe like one a week. Yeah. And then I needed time to process that. Right. It's it's very content driven. It's heavy. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Especially I, if you're not familiar with like the particular lines of thought that are laid out. Exactly. Um, but so just before we get any farther into it, um, basically the way this was laid out, right? 40 days, six weeks of content. Um, a lot of it was readings from, you know, old philosophers and just people who have really had a hand in developing mm -hmm. philosophy and theology as it is. Yeah. And the reflections are what the daily things were called. Mm -hmm. So I'll just be referring to the daily reflection yeah. as reflections. So, so could have been um, like writings or, or podcasts. Right, writings, podcasts. There were some videos. videos. There were some like... Okay. Live. There was a song in there. Live, just there was mm -hmm. live discussions, and it wasn't all like you know staunch atheists. I'm like God's bad. You yeah, know? yeah. I right. didn't really read a whole lot of that actually. All right, let's talk about the things that we got out of atheism for Lent. Okay. Um. Okay. So there was a reflection. So I think this pretty much sums up a lot of what atheism for Lent was all about, and it was this uh, this dude. <laughs> Evagri... <laughs> I looked these up on Google earlier yeah, to try yeah, to figure yeah. out how to say them, and I can't remember. Evagrius... Okay. Eva Evagrius Ponticus. Evagrius oh, Ponticus. man. All right? So this dude's like a desert father from the 4th century, just a monk, right? And yeah. 4th century. The desert fathers, it's always been like tossed around, wasn't sure what it meant. Right, meant, right. Just like very early, like mystical Christianity. Okay. Just like third way of seeing and interpreting the world. So the narrow road, right? Oh. What this guy says is God cannot be grasped by the mind. If he could be grasped, he would not be God. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But that's what we want. We so want. Even in that statement though, right? Like this just kind of shows you like the layers of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Assumptions are made in that statement, right? Because God cannot be grasped by the mind. If he could not be grasped, he would not be God, right? So even putting like the term he on that, yeah. it like puts in these layers of will, agency, yeah. masculine. Yes. You know? Yeah. So it's like you're grasping, but you're trying to ungrasp. Yeah. Right? The path of unknowing everything that you've known. Yep. It's like very clearly a point on that path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Oh my God. Where somebody wouldn't even find that valid at all just by the language. Right, right. Wow. On both, on both sides of the spectrum. Yeah. You know? Yep. Both sides. Like people who do have that very masculine, like he agency will right. view of God and then people who are very hurt by that yeah. masculine interpretation and uh, yeah. filter. That a lot of people view God through. That's a good one. And in so many churches, like we just pay respect to this with with words, yeah. but not in thought or deed. You know, it's like oh. I don't think you could walk into a Christian church in the nation. Well, you probably could. Yeah. <laughs> but you could probably couldn't walk into a Christian church in the United States that wouldn't agree with the statement that God can't be fathomed by the human mind. But then, on top of that, you turn around and say, this is what we know about God because the Bible tells us. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. So you're living into the mystery, but you really, you want something certain. Right. You know? Right. Living into the mystery is hard work. It's the hardest thing. It sucks. <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah. Like. Yep. Read that quote again. God cannot be grasped by the mind. If he could be grasped, he would not be God. Right? Mm. I wake up a lot of days and I'm just like, man, I wish I could just believe something and be in community. Yeah. You know, 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's easier. It's um, it's it sucks for us humans though because we need it. I think we need it. We need to see it. We need to grasp it and feel it and hold it. But then, like it, that fails even too because it's like I if you are if you are like hurt by an injustice or you, we could do it the other way. If you love something so much, like then prove it. You can't prove it. You can't physically touch it and hold it and put it in a. Uh, that's why we make music, right? This goes back to what we were talking about before we started this podcast. Yeah. You talking about climbing, uh, right? And you were talking yes. about climbing and just how like it's beauty. Yeah. And just seeing somebody like finesse up the rock face, you know? Yeah. 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 It, sometimes like I tell Chase, I, I tell him, I'm like, I get kind of nervous, but it's not nervous as like, oh, I'm scared of heights. No, it's like, ooh, it feels like I can't feel my feet because it feels like I'm floating. I haven't experienced that. Oh my gosh. I need to get back into climbing. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's, man. And I, I was re- Here's the thing. I resisted it. And honestly, I thought I wasn't like physically apt or able to do it. You don't have to be. You really don't have to be. Yeah. So is it this, I'm like, I'm getting a sense (laughs) of the sensation, I think. Yeah. Is it like being on a rock face? You're not relying on the rope. Mm. Is that, you know, when I climb, I'm terrible. So I'm like always like, oh, okay, the rope's there. Like, yep, yeah. You know, you use the rope to like get up to the next thing, right? Right, right. But you're just kind of floating there in this sensation. Oh. And you're just like on the rock face and it's kind of like the rope disappears and you're just floating there. For sure. Oh. For sure. I need to and, and, climbing. And, and even like, <laughs> yeah, you definitely should. Um, and even like, you know, Chase would kind of... Um, you know, pull me up, leverage me up with the rope. And I'm like, that's cheating. That's cheating. Don't do that. You know? And I would like curse at him and I'm like, I can't do it. I'm like, wait, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And even just that switch of re-narrating that, oh my gosh, it even works wonders. Cause I'm not like, I'm not the best physically fit person. I do some exercises, but that is not even relevant to rock climbing. So even even taking that out of it, you're like, oh, shit, stuff. There's possibility, even when I extract that. Get back into it. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So many, like, spiritual implications from your yeah. climbing story, though. Like, the rope. That's a thing. Like... <laughs> uh, that, that's you know. a thing. <laughs> yeah. The wonder, the fear, the. Oh, oh, I know. And even just like finding your own way of doing it, which is completely different than somebody else finding their way of climbing the route. You're like, oh, okay, that works too. And that there's no one way. Um, and I think, and I, I don't like using the word God, but, and I think, you know, that source works in that way too that it's not just very formulaic it's not very one path it's one path for one person you know and i noticed with the climbing analogy something that happens in me is i feel a lot of resistance my my fight or flight kind of engages right because it's yeah. like about you mentioned climbing to the top i'm like mm-hmm. yeah this is funny my my inner like conservative from my youth pops up right Ooh, yeah and He's saying, there's not multiple ways to the top. Yeah. There's not multiple ways to the top. That's because there is no top. Oh. Right? That's nope. That's yeah. the journey right there. Yeah. I, I can get angry because I don't think there's multiple ways to the top. But really the truth, there is no top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all just on journeys. Yes, yes. <laughs> or else there would be a destination. Awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. Um, I guess I'll just finish going through mine and you can go through yours. Go for it. Okay, here we go. I looked this one up earlier. I listened to it like four times. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can get this name right. Um, Ludwig mm-hmm. Feuerbach. 
Okay. Ludwig Feuerbach. Yeah. So we got like the V for the W. Yep, yep. It's not Ludwig. 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 In German. Oh man. What do you um, say? Okay, so Lud Ludwig Feuerbach in his book The Essence of Christianity. There's these two quotes. Let's see here. One I have on my phone. If therefore my work is negative, irreligious, atheistic, let it be remembered that atheism, at least in the sense of this work, is the secret of religion itself. That religion itself, not on the surface, but fundamentally, not in intention or according to its own supposition, but in its heart, in its essence, believes in nothing else than the truth and divinity of human nature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and there's more. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> My only wish is to transform friends of God into friends of man, believers into thinkers, devotees of prayer into devotees of work, candidates for the hereafter into students of the world, Christians who by their own procession and admission are half animal, half angel, into persons, into whole persons. I negate the fantastic hypocrisy of theology and religion in order to affirm the true nature of men. Mm. <laughs> oh man! Oh. Well, I like how he used the word transform <sighs> instead of like kill or very anarchist yeah. words. Like those words, it's you know like yeah. a graceful burning down. Of, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, well, yeah, but yeah, infrastructure. But 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 it that's that's work, like the you know. central message of Christianity is like. There all there are m many things along the road of life or whatever that have to die in order to find yeah. that bigger, better, transformative life. And that's a very good message. It's when we start getting. It's when we start defining what that means and making an yes. institution out of it. You know. Yep. Yep. When we hold people hostage of mm -hmm. like holding a Bible. No, 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 it's not supposed to be about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it fills me with a lot of apprehension to, yep. to say those things, right? Yep. Because it's like, uh, there's no certainty. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> I got want to live with certainty. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <sighs> the tension's <laughs> a lot of work, but it's beautiful, you know, and that's how all beautiful things are born. Like when you take a risk. It's freaking gorgeous. Yeah. That's a good one. Ludwig. Oh, yeah. Nice job, Ludwig. 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 And what else you got? here is the second quote. It's also by Ludwig Feuerbach. That Feuerbach. That. <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. So the second quote, short and sweet to the point. Mm -hmm. God is the explanation for the unexplainable which explains nothing because it explains everything without distinction. Oh, ouch. Whoa, whoa, ouch. whoa. Just when you think like, oh yeah, that's great. And then it's like, whoa, 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 hang oh, on do, now. Let me do that again. Do it's it like again. the band-aid gets put on, you know, it feels all good. You're like, oh, my boo-boo. It's not there yeah. anymore. And then it rips off. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again. God is the explanation for the unexplainable, which explains nothing. Because it explains everything without distinction. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. can't even unpack that because it does something like so deep in me. Yeah. Especially that without distinction, right? Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I got one more. Go for it. Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche. <laughs> cool. Do you wanna you wanna take one here and then I'll do mine and you can. No. Have free reign. I, I don't. I don't. I didn't write anything down. Oh, okay. That was all you. Gotcha. Yeah, I like this. All right. Get some of these papers out of the way here. I got two spiral <laughs> notebooks I'm functioning with, <laughs> so it's very technologically heavy. <laughs> Technical difficulties. I was on the wrong page. Uh, okay, so like I said, Friedrich Nietzsche. Yeah. You can tell I. I committed that one to memory. I like the Ludwig, the Fauerbach, and the Nietzsche. I was like, is it Nietzsche? 
You're right. I don't want to sound like an idiot. You're Nietzsche. Right. That's a <laughs> Maybe I'm still pronouncing it. it wrong. Right. You know, I, I tried. <laughs> um, okay, so Frederick Friedrich Nietzsche. Yeah. He's he's the God is dead guy. Mm-hmm. I think he's the first one that really started the God is dead movement. You've heard God is dead, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Like in your religious life, and it's like, God is not dead. Shoot. How long has this been around? Like this dude was probably like 18, 1800s? Yeah. Maybe before that. Yeah. Old old dude. Yeah, he's old. Yeah, eighteen hundreds. Yeah. Um. But then you have that movie that recently came out that is, this is a rejection of that uh, philosophy. God is not dead. Yeah. I think there's a God is not dead too, right? Yeah, I think like, so. What? He, I haven't seen. Either. He wasn't not dead the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in that one they think that God really is dead, and then they find out again. That yeah, they, yeah, they anyways, find out again. <laughs> that's funny. Good okay, so I think all of that comes down to this parable that he wrote. In this parable, there's this madman who goes into the town square at night. He's got a lantern. It's dark out. And then he's just shouting. He's like, where is God? Where is God? Have you seen God? Where is God? Yeah. And then all the townspeople, they gather around him, and he's in the square. And they're just like... <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy's crazy. Like, let's, let's mess with him. Mm-hmm. And they're like, God is dead. We killed him. Mm-hmm. Like, and then they just go on into this big description of like, yeah, his cold body. And like, we, you know, felt his body like grow limp under the knife and all these descriptions of killing God. Yeah. And then there's this really cryptic middle part that I don't understand. And I don't think a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. But uh, so the madman speaks next and says okay, well, I can see, like, my time has not yet come. Like, obviously, you're not ready, blah, 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 blah. And so I feel like that's probably where a lot of people mm-hmm. stop mm-hmm. in the story, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, this dude just said God is dead. God's not dead. I'm going to stop reading because this dude's a dumbass, Yeah. you know? But here's what comes next. Yeah. And then the last little paragraph. Yeah. Seriously, it's like two or three lines. Yeah. <laughs> but the last little paragraph says... And the madman was reported as going into churches and saying, what are these churches now if they're not the tombs and the sepulchers of God? Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, (laughs) you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's a very atheistic parable. Mm. But at the end... The religious critique, Mm -hmm. that's like straight from the heart, you know, and to reject that, yeah, that is, (laughs) this is a man who's on a deep journey, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. He's thought about some stuff and felt some stuff. So what are these churches if they're not the tombs and sepulchers of God, right? So in that uh, Mm. Ludwig Feuerbach quote, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right, he's like, he doesn't wish to, like, he... Call it, he says, call it atheism if you wish. You know, call it whatever you need to call it. Yeah. But this is my work. Yeah. Right? To really put people back into their bodies and give them control, like to express divinity, whatever divinity is, mm-hmm. you know? So, churches being described as the tombs and sepulchers of God, you know, it's like being a place where people are so focused on the theology mm. and the correct belief mm. that mm. they've stopped living and they've yeah. stopped breathing into a hurting world. So you're saying, so it's basically saying that it's not necessarily God is dead. Maybe we are. Yeah. We're internally dead. Right. When we get like so into the church that, yeah. that we just want to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. That we become like, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is Joseph Campbell quote I just absolutely love. Let's hear it. People aren't searching for the meaning of life. They're searching for the experience of being alive. Yeah. Yes. Which is ultimately, isn't that the meaning of life anyway? It's the experience. Right. Okay. Goo. Can I just ask you a question? Yeah. Would you get out of atheism for that? Yes, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah. So one thing for me that this was just fan, a fantastic experience, right, is the term atheism. Like, in the churches I grew up in, like, atheism, 
that's synonymous with going to hell, yes, right? Yes. And uh, but atheism, it's a much more theological term. And basically, what it is is the lack of a belief in a theistic God. Yeah. That might sound kind of confusing, but what what that comes down to is the lack of a belief in a God with will, agency, and uh, appointment. Mm. I, I, mm-hmm. I was going for three points, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that last one. I think that's uh, right on. Uh, I think that's you pretty much nailed that. It seems to sound um, pretty good to me. I it, doesn't that sound a lot like agnosticism? You can still be an atheist and acknowledge God in a sense. Like yeah. you could say that God is nothing. How would you put this? Maybe saying, "I believe in God," even if God is only the name that we use for the capacity of humans to love one another. Yes. So like, it's it's very atheist, uh, right? It's like God's not a thing, but God ooh, is a thing. Ooh, ooh! But that's good because there were even readings in atheism for Lent that uh, talked about God as a being, mm-hmm. an actual thing, yeah, and kind of rejected that idea, but didn't totally. Um, but I don't think that I, I, there's no obviously conclusion. Because we're still talking about this for thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but there were some good points to take from all this material. I just got a lot of comfort yeah. out of coming to terms with what atheism means. Oh, yeah. And not having a bunch of uh, like societal and social implications for what that term would mean to use it. right? Yep. Like to identify with it in some ways. Agreed. Like that it's, it's a container, mm-hmm. you know, it's not a line. Mm-hmm. It's like a container that can hold some thoughts. Yeah. And it's not like a line that once you cross over, there's, you can't return from it. And I think it's a, the mo- one of the most valuable containers for Christians. And I think every Christian needs an atheist container mm-hmm. because it, it does wonders for right. believing in God, even though I might yeah. define that different from my traditional upgrade, agreed you know agreed That's what'd you it. get out of it uh same i think i think it was a great space to kind of um maybe not debunk but maybe to listen to the people that feel like they've not heard a voice i've always been kind of attuned to Noticing like the outsider or the person that's not being heard Mm. and I feel like a lot of these people have been rejected by Christianity at its Worst at at the worst form of Christianity Because like I personally don't like to identify myself as a Christian or an atheist or anything I Um, identify as an atheist. What's that? I get mileage out of identifying for it as an atheist. Oh, yeah Maybe I'll talk about that before we close it out. Yeah. But, okay, so, but I want to get back to what you were saying. You were talking about uh, these people. And by those these people, were you talking about the other members of our AFL group? Them. Or the, uh, the writers. content writers like Nietzsche and... Yeah, definitely yeah. the content writers. But okay. also, I mean, also other people <clears throat> in our community, which was a good handful or two. Um, yep. Just being able to not be the one to cast our voices or the content writer's voices out. Not actually embracing it. And what did Pete say? Like a decentering practice. So kind of like mm. everything we learned doesn't have to be right or wrong. It just is. It's just all yes. Okay. Cool. But what about the other side of the coin? Oh, man. Oh, so good. Yeah. It's beautiful. Kind of like, yeah. Holding up a mirror to like ourselves and saying, what am I not seeing here? What am I not seeing here that you'd like to show me? Universe or God or whatever. And allowing somebody space to express something that's very controversial for you. It's like, it allows more space for you. Yeah. Like, if you can hold somebody else's 
opposing views, you can be more feel fully human. Yes. Yes. Which is the... Because you trust that somebody else can do that for you. Yeah. Yep. Which is part of that central message of Christianity. But a lot of people... Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll stop there. <laughs> so, atheism for Lent. That's going to close out like this segment. Do you have any other things you'd like to add to the this closing out of the atheism for Lent section of the podcast? Um, there's like a million things, but I would just like to say it was a great experience. Anybody who's curious about it, do it. I probably won't do it again because twice I think is fine, but yeah. I'm gonna use shot. I'm gonna use the content. Yeah, me too. I'm gonna go through that like very slowly. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because it's a really good primer on a bunch of critical thinkers. Yep. That fantastic idea. Yeah. So I think I think what this allowed this course allowed me to do was listen, because we all want to be heard, and I think we all want to be seen, like you were saying. And I know when, I talked a lot through our meetings, and that was a very like healing experience for me, just to be able to say exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. And that's what the space is about. Yeah. You know, really. It's not, I'm, I'm annoyed that we've gotten like this far into it, into the dis discourse about atheism for Lent and we haven't talked about this, but that it's really intended just to create a space, not to convert everybody to atheists, nope. atheism, no. but which, is that a thing? I mean, a, a convert, I'm a convert. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> convert for anti, yeah. I'm a reborn atheist. <laughs> Yeah, one of those terms, we'll coin it. But yeah, it was just, uh, it was started out in a very mindful way. And that's to hold space for everybody. So they can just come and bring their true selves. Yeah. And then you can talk about it. Yep. So it's, I mean, yes. Yeah. The content's very, a lot of it was very heady. A lot of it was above my head. Mm -hmm. But it's very space driven. Mm -hmm. Yep. So to, to marry the content in special space. Yeah. Right. All right, so there you have it. Atheism for Lent. Now you know what it's all about. And if you're interested in checking this out for yourself, just Google Atheism for Lent. It's like the first thing that pops up. It runs from sometime in March through April. So check it out and make sure to connect with me on social media. There is a Grounded Presence Facebook and Instagram. The handle for those is the same at The Grounded Presence. Also, feel free to send me an email. I would love to hear any thoughts, comments, suggestions, or just good stories that this episode has sparked in you. The email address is thegroundedpresence at gmail.com. So until next time, keep living life, keep enjoying it, and remember to stay grounded in the midst of it.